Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video it's kind of the start of getting really into Kubernetes for myself and just learning containerization to a level that I feel quite confident with. Uh, so this is just going to be me playing around with Kubernetes and containerization and just documenting my journey essentially through it and also maybe providing some insights um, for anyone watching as well. So with this video all I'm really going to be doing is setting up um, micro Kates on my Zimmer board. So my Zimmer board is going to act as my main node in all of this. Now, I I have the way I'm going to do this is I have Portainer running on my Raspberry Pi, and what I was thinking initially is that I was going to go onto my Zimmer board and set up micro Kates and then have Portainer manage it. But actually, um, I it turns out that um, I can actually use Portainer to configure micro Kates on another server, just using um, SSH credentials that I can give Portainer. And it will go in there and it will set it all up and also install the Portainer agent so then it can come back to the uh, the Portainer instance that's running on my Raspberry Pi. So I thought, one, that's a great way for me to get my Kubernetes up and running. Two, it's a fantastic way for me to play around with a new feature on Portainer that I wasn't aware of. So um, I think let's dive into it. So if you're not familiar with uh, Portainer. I've made a few video. Oh, actually, I, I've got a few videos where I use it, but I've got one dedicated to setting it up and a quick overview. It's a bit old now, but I think it, the general idea is still there. But it's it's a service that just allows full management of not just Docker containers, Docker swarms, but also Kubernetes um, as well, and they can be in the cloud and stuff as well. So um, we'll be playing. This will be kind of our main interface for. Our journey within the Kubernetes space as well so this is gonna be fun so the first thing that we want to do and if you want to follow along you might see I am um, in the top left here I have the business edition but they actually if you come down to licenses here they actually will give you up to five nodes for free on a personal use subscription um, I can have a link in the description if you want to use that so uh, if you want the reason I say that is because uh, to add a Kubernetes to set up Kubernetes um, in this way that I am doing it requires that business edition. So um, all you have to do is request a free license. You get emailed it, bam, away you go, you have business edition. So it's a good way to get started. Anyway, let's actually start doing this, right? So if I go into environments and you can see here, I have my Raspberry Pi. Remember this is running on my Raspberry Pi. And if we come into a couple of stacks that I have running is Ghost and Nextcloud, these weren't created by Portainer, uh, hence why it's limited. Um, but we can see the full containers here. So at the top we have uh, the Cloudflare uh, agent that's connecting to Cloudflare for the tunnel to expose a couple of services that I have. So we have Nextcloud running. Um, that's just a private Nextcloud that I have, mainly just using it for Nextcloud talk. Uh, we have Ghost, which is actually running the TechDocs blog. And then we have Portainer itself. So this is what's running on the Raspberry Pi. But now we want to set up a new environment for the Zimmer board. So let's go ahead and do that. So, and this is all new to me. I may be sounding like I know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't. Um, this is, I'm still learning as I go as well. So um, yeah, this is just how I learn. So uh, we'll click add environment here. And as you can see, there's a list of things that we can add now, right? We've got existing ones, or we can set up new ones. And again, you won't be able to do that new ones um, unless you have the business edition. It, d it was locked out for me, um, just an FYI. So what we can do is click Create Kubernetes Cluster, and we'll start a wizard. And as you can see here, we've got an uh, environment wizard to start us up. So we can see here it's going to create a Kubernetes cluster, which which is micro case, which is what I want. This is what I was going to use anyways, but again, Portainer can set it all up, hence why we're going down this route and using it. So we can give the credentials a name, right? So this isn't anything related for the SSH connection. This is just a credentials name that's going to be stored in Portainer just for your record that you know what these credentials were for. So I'm going to give it the server name of the Zimmer board, which is AlZim, and we can just call it creds. Now, uh, for the SSH username, we need to supply a username that um, actually has pseudo privileges on the actual server that I'm trying to connect to. Now, I know the user TechDocs has pseudo privileges, so I will use that. I don't use SSH password authentication for any of my SSH connections. I like to use key pairs, so we will be using um, the SSH private key in this instance. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to generate a new key pair 
and then I'm going to copy the uh, public key pair that this gives me, and I'm going to paste it onto the Zimmer board under the authorized host file on the SSH. I'll, I'll show all this, um, and then um, that should allow us to have the connectivity from the Raspberry Pi to the Zimmer board and to be able to SSH uh, using those credentials. So uh, let's do that. So let's generate a new key pair. Um, I'm not going to put a password on. Uh, I will just generate the new key pair. Now, if this was production or like a real mission critical, I would definitely use a passphrase. I should probably just use one even for the demonstration purposes, but you know, oh well. <laughs> um, right, so what we need in this case is I need this, this public key. That's the one that I need. This is the one that I need to put in the authorized um, host on the Zimmer board. So let's copy this and let's jump to the terminal. Radio. so we are on the um, Zimmer board now. So this, uh, as you can see, um, it says our Zim right here. So we know we're on the Zimmer board server. So this is going to be our, our microcates node, right? So we need to go to the authorized host. So in the SSH where I am, and if we do an LS, we can see we've got authorized keys here. So I need to add that public key into here. So let's do that. So let's just do a, uh, a nano into the authorized keys make a new line and I might just go back and copy it really quick. All right, come here, paste. And now we've added that new public line here. So we can save this in nano, done. And now let's go back to Portana and let's make sure to download our private key. And we'll download the public key just for good measure as well. And we'll hit continue. And we'll click add credentials. So now we've successfully added the credentials. We can test that this all works now by doing uh, adding the IP address of the Zimmer board. So 192.168.68.110 and hit the test connection. And now we can see that yes, it can hit that node, which is great. Uh, the Kubernetes version, um, it seems that when I change it to the latest stable, it mentions something about the metric server having a bit of an issue. Um, I haven't actually looked into that, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, I'd be more confident if I was aware of what the actual issue was and the effect of it. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to stick with the 1.24. It is an older version, but yeah. Um, again, this isn't production or anything. This is just for my own learning. And if I find limitations from doing that, then we can look at possible pathways of upgrading it, right? Uh, we have add-ons here. Now, um, again, I can add that metric server. We've got a few other things here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about any of this. I'm going to add add-ons as I require them. Or if I find out that I should have added it. This is all learning, right? So um, so I haven't given it a name. So let's give it, uh, we'll call this the Alzin cluster, because that's what it is. And now we can hit provision environment. Now providing that our SSH credentials and everything are all legit and connecting well, this should just work. Oh, right, I'm back. So it is the next day, but... It didn't take that long. It was actually relatively quick. I had to reinitialize it again, uh, the uh, deployment, because again, it was just an issue on the server side. I fixed it, uh, ran through, through the exact same steps you've seen, uh, and it, it only took a few minutes for microcates and Portana and everything to be stood up. So as you can see here, it's added a new environment, and then this just gets treated the same way as any environment does in Portana, as in shows up here under your environments, and you can see everything. So here we can see the Alzim cluster, which is now up. It only consists of one node because we just installed it to the one. You can see that um, it does have some applications, but you can see that it's saying that it's hiding the system resources. Uh, I wonder if, oh, here we go, show system. So here we go. So we can see that the Portana agent is all up and running, the core DNS, um, and all the other um, systems there are all, all set up as well. So. That's awesome, and I wonder if I can go back uh, to the namespaces, and you should be able to see we've got the default one there, and then if I show all, we've got the other ones here as well. So that's all set up, which is awesome. So um, I'll just jump to the terminal, and I'll just show you that as well. So if we quickly jump... Right, so we're here on the terminal now, and as you can see, I've got here, um, I've just done an LS before, oh, sorry, not an LS. Uh, I've just done a get deployment and get pod, so you can see the exact same ones that we've seen in Portana. So it's all there now, it's all it's all set up. Uh, so that means now in the next video, we can actually start using it and start deploying things on it and start getting a, a feel for it. But 
essentially Portainer again I wanted to wanted to use it for the overall um, management and whatnot anyways but I just used it to deploy all of this just like that and I didn't even have to worry about um, I didn't even have to connect to it to be honest except for adding the SSH uh, public key so yeah that's pretty straightforward um, I hope you found that interesting and maybe you'll use it for yourself uh, if you do let me know it's a relatively new feature um, actually it's very new it just came out in the latest update of Portano so very cool so yeah uh, that's pretty much it for this video we I guess the next video we'll start looking at deployments and playing around and seeing if we can host something so yeah look forward for that so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye bye